Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a good Saturday. Well, back out here cutting beans. So far everything's running good and dry. Right around that uh, 11 to 12 percent mark. So not bad. Pretty short right through here because I'm right on top of the sand hill. In fact, actually, this whole side of the field is pretty sandy. I'm right, right, right along the main highway. And so, anyway, yeah, that's just a little quick video of what's happening. You can see we get up on top of these sand hills. The beans get pretty short, and the grass takes over from the late summer grass. I come out here, and um, uh, oh, it would have been at the no, kind of toward the end of July and uh, sprayed second time over but like i say you get the late summer rain it brings in a late crop of grass growing and so like i say you're up on top of this old sand knob there's not much up here but you get down off that the beans pick right back up pretty heavy heavy again Once again, run, running the small combine with the 20-foot head in this field. As you know, I started uh, we started corn here a couple days ago to be able to be able to test the dryer out, and so the big combine is actually still set up for corn. We did get the dryer up and going. Bottom burner is working. We got the bugs worked out of that. Now we're just uh, trying to get th different things fine-tuned, set in. And so here, here, probably within about a half hour or so, my dad's gonna come out and he he'll hop in, run the combine, and I'm gonna go to work on the dryer. Trying to make adjustments, that way it will unload faster. And so there's some manual adjustments inside the dryer itself that um, you can set to open things up and make it unload quicker. Because right now the dryer's kind of set up, is basically set up for continuous flow and we run batch. And so kind of, we kind of got to customize it to our settings and what we need. In fact, that little truck right there on the road, that's our landlord, Rod Liming. He helps us run the grain cart and that kind of stuff, but for right now, we're, we don't need the grain cart in these beans because the semi is right over, over there at the farm. And plus the grain cart's got corn in it, so. Gotta get the corn out of it. Well, take that back. With the semi already having beans on it, we don't want to go and dump that corn on top of those beans. Next week, when we get switched over running beans full, ste full steam with both combines, what we'll do is take and um, put beans into the cart, and then when we go to make that first un... Hey, you got me there. I just tripped the dryer to start online. Okay, sounds good. Okay, yeah, my dad just hollered at me on the on the two-way radio to let me do let me do, know about the dryer. But uh, anyway, like I say about the grain cart, when we get ready to run beans next week, what we'll do is when the semi is empty, we'll put beans in, into the cart, and then that'll run the corn out of the cart, and then with the semi empty, we'll make sure that we take and dump that right on top of the door of the semi. That way it's not all mixed right into the truckload of beans. It just goes on to the gate and then goes out at the plant. Well, at the terminal. That would be ADM grain. So far though, everything's feeding through pretty good. Oh, I'm running along. I don't know if you can see that very well. Right at about uh, three and a half mile an hour, maybe a little bit more. Here a couple years ago, just like I did on the big combine, 
fact, if I remember, I, I actually put the floor kit into the big combine back in 2019. And then um, I put a floor kit into this combine also. In fact, I think that might have, might have actually been at, at the end of 2019. But there's a feeder floor kit that you can put into these things. It's aftermarket. However, I, I think Agco has something as well. And um, it just opens everything up and it kind of made a new machine, uh, machine out of this combine because there's a choke point in the throat. And what that, what that aftermarket update did, did is it took the choke point out. You just got to cut out a lot of stuff and weld, weld in new stuff. And so it definitely made a bit big difference. Now right down through here, the beans, are, beans aren't too bad. Any of you guys out there who, who are farming clay and good heavy black dirt, be thankful for it. Where you're pulling down anywhere from 60 to 90 bush the acre soybeans, if, if we hit right around, if we hit anywhere from 40 to 50, we think we're doing good. That's just the big difference between good old yellow sand, like this hill that I'm coming up to, up to right here, and clay and black dirt. It just holds, it holds the moisture just a lot, whole lot longer. This is kind of a triangle shaped field. Uh, there's a neighbor getting home. Right over there is a drainage ditch. I actually did the along the ditch just last night. That's like that, like I say, that's an angling end row. I did that end row all last night that way because we're hoping to try and get this field here done today because dad wants to plant wheat here. And so we'll get the wheat planted in this field. And it will give me a chance to test out my new disc and crumbler. So we'll see how that works. But that won't be until next week. And yeah, we do have some volunteer corn. The one good thing, these are enlist soybeans. The enlist, it doesn't kill the corn, but it does damage it enough to where it doesn't really produce much of an ear. You get a, basically a stalk, maybe a little bit of a kind of like a little nub ear. Yeah, right there's that good old yellow sand. You get maybe a little bit of a nub ear that don't really mount anything, and that's it. Well, I'll tell you what, I think I'm gonna call that an end to this video, so take care. Hope you all have a good Saturday. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.